Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. So we're going to do a really quick video looking at all of the various vehicles and ships in this uh, new Star Wars Episode Nine trailer, the final trailer. As you can see, J.J. Abrams has gone pretty hardcore with ships. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try to identify as many ships as possible. And if you guys spot any that I've missed, help me out. All right, let's go. So in the first scene here, we have Rey running away from someone who's firing a blaster bolt at her, which she casually deflects away. On the ground, a helmet of some sort drops a quick search of resistance helmets, and we can see some similar colors, designs, and material choices. It lacks the markings of a resistance pilot helmet, which is also more of a quarter helmet design, not a full face helmet like the ones that resistance troopers wear. I think that's what we're seeing here. You can see that the helmet here has an internal leather skull cap, it also has a flippable mouth guard, sort of like on a modular motorcycle helmet, which the Resistance Trooper helmets have as well. Next scene, we move into an interior that is very similar to one of the first shots we see of Rey inside of that giant husk of a Star Destroyer in Force Awakens. But what we're actually seeing is the interior of the first Death Star, where Obi-Wan Kenobi deactivates the tractor beam to unlock the Millennium Falcon or at least something that looks pretty close to it. Now, I'm pretty sure the ruins of the second Death Star and Endor will be in Episode 9, so seeing this Death Star 1 interior is a bit confusing, but we don't really know how anything will fit in at this point. But let's take a closer look. You can see the walkways in the background. Look at this large cylindrical pipe next to the walkway. It's also seen in the trailer. Look at the vent patterns on the walls. Look at the thin ring around the central column with the little platform. That's what old man Ben Kenobi used to navigate around the tractor beam switch. There are clearly a lot of similarities here. The next scene looks like it's inside of a giant hangar, but the massive structure everyone is under is actually a ship. And not just any type of ship, but the legendary CR-90 Corvette Blockade Runner. You know, the first starship that anyone ever saw in the first Star Wars film. That was a Tant IV, officially Princess Leia's diplomatic vessel for her duties as Senator of Alderaan. That ship was unfortunately lost after Vader pulled it over due to some unpaid parking tickets. Now, how do we know this is a CR-90 Corvette? Well, the big giveaway are those three giant cylindrical things in the top left. Those are the escape pods, like the ones that R2-D2 and C-3PO escape onto Tatooine with. And in the front right, we have a large turbo laser turret, and there's also the landing struts right there, which are exactly in the right location for CR-90. Now, during the rebellion, these things were used for everything from running supplies, fighting major battles. One infantry unit, Twilight Company, even used one of these ships as a home for the entire war. They're actually a lot larger than you would think, around 150 meters long, and you can see that when it's parked on top of a bunch of people and not in the bay of a one mile long Star Destroyer. And yes, the Resistance has them. As a matter of fact, Kaz geeks out the same way I am right now when he first saw one of the Resistance's CR-90s. They might be old, but so is the Millennium Falcon, and of course the CR-90, like the YT-1300, is Corellian made. They know how to design ships. And then if we look at the next shot from the trailer, yes, that is clearly the cockpit of a CR-90 flying overhead. Very cool. JJ knows how to please the fans. Okay, moving on now. We have this big armored looking boat thing that Rey and Kylo Ren are fighting on, probably before they make up and join forces or something. But it's actually not a ship. Upon closer inspection, as the waves move, it does not. So this thing is clearly lodged on a sandbar or maybe it's something massive, like a piece of the second Death Star. We'll be doing an entire video about the Death Star and why we think it's the second one in this video, so stay tuned for that. But Anyway, a quick giveaway that this is the Death Star is its proximity to all the other fallen debris from the Death Star, and the fact that there is no reason to have boats in Star Wars when Star Destroyers can just appear out of the ocean. Also, there's clearly a turbo laser emplacement sticking out in the back. Although it's a single turbo laser and not one of the more popular dual turbo laser towers we see on the Death Star, it's clearly Imperial built and definitely belongs to the surface of that battle station. Next up, this absolutely beautiful shot of an iceberg perfectly mirrored on a still body of water, carefully lit from behind, making it glow just a little bit. We have several First Order TIE Fighter variants flying past the camera, off into the distance. These are the Special Forces variants, not the normal ones. You can tell by their red paint, along with a small turret on the bottom, which houses heavy laser cannons and a mag pulse warhead launcher. These are not your father's Imperial TIE Fighters. These things had shields, hyperdrives, a rear gunner, and all sorts of other things. They could easily keep up with the next wing, especially the older variants that the Resistance were flying. 
Now let's go back to the giant ship coming out of the water. It's obviously an Imperial class Star Destroyer, you can tell by the iconic and somewhat stupid bridge design. The real question is, is this a first order Imperial Star Destroyer, or one of the older Imperial ones, and maybe it's a part of Palpatine's secret ghost navy or something. First, this isn't one of the Imperial Class Mark II Star Destroyers, it's a Class I. You can tell by that thing that's on top of the middle of the bridge of the ship, it's a tractor beam targeting a ray. The Class II's had a communications tower there, which is a little bit different. Now, the First Order probably used both of these ships. The only thing that they really changed inside of these ships was that they automated a lot of the systems to reduce the crew size. Although upon closer inspection of this shot, that's actually not water it's rising out of. It looks like maybe clumps of dirt. So maybe these ships are being reawoken from the dead by that sketchy looking Sith lightning coming from the sky. Who knows? Right, this next shot is crazy for its sheer amount of ships. I don't know what that center ship is. It's probably some unmarked Corellian YT freighter model. There are a lot of those things flying around the galaxy. But let's take a look at the right side here. I believe that is the Ghost from Rebels. You know, the VCX-100 light freighter used by Harrison Dula and Ezra and Kanan Jarrus. Well, last time we saw them, it was at the Battle of Scarif and then also at Endor. By that time, Harrison Dula was a general, I believe. But seeing the ghost makes me wonder, maybe they finally did find Thrawn and Ezra and finally killed all of those murderous space whales that took them. Did not expect to see that ship there. Or it could just be a VCX-100 light freighter that wasn't the ghost. What else is there besides the ghost? Well, we have a E-76 Navy 1B Escort Frigate, otherwise known as a medical frigate. The Resistance still used these and the Rebels were famous for stealing them from the Empire, which is actually where the ships were first manufactured. They were supposed to be escort frigates, but obviously they didn't do a great job. There's another one to the left of it in the trailer as well. Beneath that is what I believe is a Mon Calamari cruiser, potentially another MC-85 model like the Radis. All Mon Calamari cruisers are built a bit differently, but the bridge style and bulbous frame is definitely Mon Cala style. Plus, we know Leia goes to see the Mon Cala and asks for their help after the uh, Battle of Krait. She basically needs more ships. She did the same thing during the Rebellion, and that's how they got those cruisers the first time around. Although I have to say, this Mon Calamari cruiser, if it actually is one, looks quite small, so I'm not really sure if that's actually what it is. On the left, we have what looks like a Thantra class light cruiser, but it really can't be. I mean, these were precursors to the old Republic Hammerhead cruisers, which would make this ship basically 4,000 years old. That ship also looks like a Defender class light corvette used by the Jedi Order during the Great Galactic War, which is still roughly 4,000 years ago. So, who knows? I mean, there were still hammerhead corvettes, which were a lot smaller than the old Republic cruiser variants, so maybe it's a design that never went out of fashion. Oh, and speaking of hammerhead corvettes, there's one right there. Very similar to the Lightmaker, which did that whole epic ramming thing during the Battle of Scarif. You can tell that's a hammerhead corvette by that junk in the trunk, which are basically just giant escape pods. The little guy right there is a U-Wing. You can tell by its engine configuration. Love it. One of my favorites. And then there's an MG-100 Star Fortress, which I really don't like. It's just terrible. And lastly, we have the rectangle thing that kind of looks like a Quasar-class fire carrier. I think so. Not really sure. I kind of like what JJ did here. He basically took a 10 year old's dream fleet of every Star Wars ship and then basically put them all in one place. Good job. This also kind of reminds me of that time when Commander Shepard united the galaxy against the Reapers. Now I'm sure I'm missing something though in this scene, so please let me know if you spot anything else. Okay, that's a shot of Ryan Johnson's ego when he found out that some people didn't like his movie. And next we have a ski speeder, similar to the V4XD ski speeder from the Battle of Crate. One of the most pointless vehicles ever designed, although this one is a bit different instead of having the cockpit on the edge, it's in the center. Not sure why they're skimming over waves, seems dangerous, probably should just be flying. Now here we get another type of land speeder thing, uh, don't know what model it is exactly, but it looks more like Jakku Scrapper built than Tatooine Hut built. Also notice the moisture evaporator farms in the background. And then finally, the Y-Wing is back, looking even more skeletal than it did during the Rebellion. These things honestly shouldn't be allowed to fly anymore. They were built during the Clone Wars, and I remember reading that they were roughly around the price of a 20-year-old Honda Civic by the time of The Force Awakens, so yeah, death traps. But I'm also glad to see them back, and it looks like this one is going up against an Imperial Class Star Destroyer Mark I, but it has a modified Siege Cannon on the bottom. Maybe it's some kind of First Order hybrid, who knows. But anyway, the Y-Wing should have been in The Last Jedi, not those stupid Star Fortress things. 
They didn't really make any sense at all. I have a whole rant video on it if you guys want to check it out. It, it, it's really angry. And then we have Ray and Kylo kind of joining forces, destroying this black thing here. It kind of looks like a statue. People are saying it's Vader's helmet. I can't really tell, to be honest. Okay, lastly, we have this charging scene with Finn and the new character Jaina on some more space horses. Thank God these aren't those terrifying llamas from the last movie, which turned that whole casino scene into kind of a Harry Potter-like nightmare. These horses kind of look cool and more like normal horses. Here's a better production shot so you can see what they actually look like. I like this production shot because they're riding in a field, which is a good place to ride a horse. This scene from the trailer, however, has them riding on top of a Star Destroyer. I mean, I love Finn, he's one of my favorite characters, but if you're riding a horse on a Star Destroyer in a space battle, you kind of deserve to be blown up. Now we gotta remember guys, Finn is kind of a badass. He's a former stormtrooper. Give the man a rifle and stop putting him on animals, please. In the second shot, we see a bunch more of these Imperial class Star Destroyers, a pair of Sith TIE Fighters that have triangle shaped S foils. Not a huge fan of them, actually. I'm more of a rogue one striker kind of guy. As the Sith fighters fly by, then we see a B wing and an X wing following. And lastly, of course, Rey is using Luke's lightsaber, the one that originally belonged to Anakin Skywalker, because it kind of stays in the family clone or not. Well, so there you have it, guys. Those are all the ships that we could find. Obviously, there are a few here or there that we missed. Uh, we didn't talk about the Millennium Falcon because I'm hoping you guys all know about the Falcon, right? The Karelian Freighter. That's awesome. You should read it. Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome Episode 9 coverage. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.